Hi guys, Chris Wright here. We're going to have a look at DxO Photolab 4 and in particular the local adjustments, but I'm going to take this picture through from the very beginning. So what we're looking at here is the picture straight out of the camera. So hazy day, um, decent light in the foreground, but uh, it's taken on the North Yorkshire Moors looking into Wensleydale. So um, Swaledale in the foreground, Wensleydale in the background. So the first thing I'm going to do, some of you will be familiar with this, some won't, but I'm going to look in my presets and I'm going to do the DxO standard preset. What this has done is applied corrections, if you like, out of the box to the picture. And we can have a look and see what it's actually done by clicking on this um, toggle here. It's applied some smart lighting. It's got rid of the vignetting, which would have come from the lens. It's kept the white balance that uh, the camera chose. Gone to the default color rendering. It's applied a little bit of of denoise. It's done a slight adjustment on the lens sharpness. Again, this comes from the DxO database. This data that it uses to correct lens sharpness comes from the DxO testing database. It's switched on the chromatic aberration and done a slight geometry correction, again, based on the characteristics of this particular lens. So if we look here, compare and flip on that, we can see the before and the after. So we can see it's brought some more detail into the sky. It's, it's a little bit of dehaze, not much. So it's, it's a good starting point. Okay, so let's have a look here and see if there's anything more that we might want to do. The first thing I'm interested in is the, um, the haze. So the, the dehaze tool is uh, Clearview Plus. And if we switch that on, we suddenly get a great deal more um, clarity in the picture. Again, compare off, on. So the one thing that I am seeing is, is there's a great deal more um, detail, if you like, more sharpness on the road here. And for my liking, it's slightly overdone. So let's have a look at ways that we can address this without affecting the whole picture. So we turn clear view plus off. And instead, let's go into the local adjustments. Switch the tool on. We can do this from here, or we could do it from up there. Now, it's useful to have the panel displaying, because although there's nothing in it at the moment, as we add local adjustments, it will add them to the panel. And you'll be able to see exactly what you've got. You'll be able to toggle them on and off and so on. So the way local adjustments work is this. You switch it on. You come into the picture and you right click. And what it's showing you here is the brush tool, the um, graduated filter tool, control points, uh, auto mask. This is a tool that picks up edges within a mask. Uh, it's quite useful for doing things like horizons. Uh, the eraser, which allows me to, if, if I mask too much, to remove some of that mask. Um, new mask tool, which really duplicates the functionality that we've got down here. It just means I can stay in the picture, right click, new mask, move on, um, reset, undo the things that I've just been doing. So let's first of all, um, keeping on the theme of getting rid of the haze, let's start with a graduated filter. So we start at the top, we drag it down, and notice I can alter the angle of this. So at this point, this is just like the glass that you would put on your camera. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my clear view. And so what I'm doing here, if you notice, is I'm bringing dehaze in, but I'm not affecting the area at the front of the picture. So I'm just going to close this. Um, and move on to the next tool. So you can see how we can selectively alter 
the impact of, of some of these controls. And you can see also that it's here now as a graduated filter. And if you like, I can turn that off. Okay, and see what the effect of that is at this level. Now let's have a go um, down to the front again. We've got this stand of trees that have got some nice autumnal colours in them. Let's see if we can do something to bring those out. So I'm going on my tool again. Okay, and what I want to do is new mask. Okay, so it's, it's now no longer uh, focused on the graduated filter. You can see the, the icon up here where I can bring it back. Uh, should I want to affect it, but um, it's now new mask mode. And let's try with an ordinary brush here. So let's have a look and see what we can do here. So we just draw the brush across. And what you'll see is the, um, the mask that's been applied. If we go over here, you can see we can adjust the size of that brush. We can adjust the feathering of the brush and this is the um, the rate at which it blends into the surrounding area um, the flow of the brush so if we use the brush repeatedly we, we effectively add impact and the opacity of the brush it shows us the amount to which the background layer is allowed to come through so at zero it's all background layer, layer. at 100 percent it's um, all all foreground layer all right, so the slider controls that it's showing to us here are split up into um, light, color, and detail. So same icons that you see up in this area here. And let's see what we can do here. So really we wanted to change the color, so I'm not gonna change around with the light, but let's make this a little warmer down there that looks quite nice we make it more saturated you know that's really beginning to come up a little bit more vibrance and i think that's probably good enough so let's close that um, that looks quite nice i'm i'm very happy with that we can see that we've got the brush here now if i was going to do that on the horizon line you can imagine that it would spill over into the sky. If I were to switch my tools on again, go to new mask again, if I were to choose auto mask here, I could brush along that horizon line. And what should happen is that it will only apply the mask within the little circle in the middle. So if I darken that horizon you can see that I've spilled it over at the bottom edge but you can see how at the top edge it's really not affecting the sky even though I had um, my brush was over it so it's picked up that contrast line along there right I'm going to get rid of that mask because I don't actually want that so just for demonstration purposes so I'm getting rid of the auto mask here and there it is gone. Okay, so let's just close that masking off. So go to new mask again. And here I'm going to pick my control point. Now, what this tool does is quite interesting because it, it picks up the pixels in the place that I drop the, um, drop the control point. So what I want to do is do some work down here. I'm going to drop it on the green because that's the color that I want to demonstrate. And what it does is it gives you a circle um, and there's the mask. So you can see within that the lighter areas are what is being um, where the effect if any is going to be applied. Yeah. So what we're seeing here is that look at the green areas. Uh, the green areas are being affected, but the brown ones, not so much. So the control points really are very, very useful, powerful 
tool. It means that I don't have to mask around the shadows, for example. If I've dropped it on a green, um, it, it allows me to affect the green. Obviously, if I go to extremes, it'll start to um, spill over into the other areas, but generally, that's how it works. Now, so one of the things that I can do is, if I move this mask around, it will show you in more or less real time what the effect is if I should choose to drop it on any particular place. What I'd like to do is to accentuate the contrast here in these trees. So what I want to do, I want to keep this lovely brightness here, but I want to dim this down a little bit. So I'm going to drop a control point in there. It's looking at the darker shades and what I can do here, if I go straight into my, I can, I can stretch the scope of it incidentally by doing this. Um, but let's see what happens if I do, if I bring that down. Okay, so what I hope you've seen here is that the area here is now slightly darker gives a little bit more contrast. Take that control point off and you can see it much lighter. Put it back in. Okay, and the important thing here was to look at the way that it didn't affect um, the area here, even though that was actually in the circle. So we're seeing the circle here the light area is included, but because we dropped it on a dark area, it's really only going to affect those pixels. This is a very, very powerful tool indeed. Okay, I'm just going to show you the repair tool very quickly, uh, because I think that does classify as a local adjustment. You find it up here, and I can use this to take out irritating features from my picture. And I don't really think I've got anything massively irritating in this picture but um, show you the functionality we've got size take this down quite small feather is the blending with the surrounds and the opacity opacity here will show you nothing of the repair here it will show you totally the repair so let's compare put it in repair mode Give myself a little bit to play with and let's take out this little splash of water here. And there it goes. So it's done a pretty good job of that. Let's move it into clone mode and let's take out this one here. Okay, now for my liking, that is not as good. Um, it's made what I would consider to be quite a poor choice. So I'm going to unwind that one and there it is back again. So you can see what it did was simply to take this area and move some of it up. So I think repair will do a better job on that. So there we go. Wait for it and it's gone. And that's a much more natural look. So that summarizes the local tools. And now over to you and enjoy yourself. Thanks a lot and see you next time.